So how does yoga positively impact the prefrontal cortex? So before I go through some of the physiological mechanisms, it's probably useful to understand what this structure is. Many of you may be familiar with it. It's one of those fashionable brain structures, right? So it's prefrontal, it's around here in the brain. And colloquially, we say it's responsible for executive functioning. What does that mean? Well, what does an executive in a company do? It takes forth various inputs from both inside and outside the company and tries to orchestrate the most appropriate response. It tries to prevent things from becoming overwhelming, right? So it downgrades the activity of a structure called the amygdala that is very much associated with the fear network. It also supports reappraisal, so looking at things from new angles and innovation. In yoga, we can say it supports the new mind. Now, in almost all mental health populations, and for many people with muscular, skeletal, and chronic pain, especially chronic pain, we find that there is both a reduction in volume of the prefrontal cortex and a reduced level of activity. So that means all of the things I just mentioned are going to be compromised. Our appropriate responses, right? We may be responding from the past rather than to the present moment phenomenon. We don't have a lot of um, innovative ways of conceiving things, and we find ourselves in tunnel vision, confused, lost, scared, because we can't downgrade the amygdala. Now, some of what I'm about to note is theory, but there is pretty solid research evidence on which it's based. So firstly to note, there was a study conducted in 2017 by Afonso actually showing that the brains of those people who practiced yoga had thicker prefrontal cortices than those who did not. Now, it could be argued that people who practice yoga just always started with thicker prefrontal cortices, but evidence shows actually, and unfortunately, or maybe not, that those people who start yoga tend to have a higher preponderance of mental health conditions than in the population in large. So the question is, how does it do that? Well, one answer came to me through the work of Adele Diamond. She looks at movement and the relationship between the development of intellect and coordination in children. And I actually had the opportunity to ask her the question of how yoga might increase prefrontal cortical volume at a conference years ago. So she has hypothesized and actually demonstrated that when we need to plan a movement, our cerebellum, which is at the back of the brain, needs to talk to parts of the brain involved in planning movement. The cerebellum, by and large, will encode as many movements as possible to become automated so that we as human beings can do like many, many things, drive, eat, without thinking. But if we're going to do something new, there needs to be crosstalk with planning structures. And another thing that the prefrontal cortex does is it is involved in planning. So, when we're planning to do an asana that we're unfamiliar with, or a sequence that we're unfamiliar with, or even a dance step, right? It doesn't just have to be asana. There is crosstalk between the cerebellum and the prefrontal cortex. And not only does this enhance the relationship, but both structures become thicker, right? So the prefrontal cortex uh, is enhanced and its capacity to work is therefore enhanced. So this is one way. Another way that has been hypothesized, and this comes through a lot of other research from Dr. Chris Streeter, is that GABA, our major inhibitory neurotransmitter, is increased through the practice of yoga. I'll do another video on GABA, so check that one out. And as we continuously release more GABA through the practice of yoga, we actually renegotiate the circuits in the prefrontal cortex and it also becomes more robust. The last method through which this happens is likely to be mindfulness. There is a large corpus of research that has come out of the mindfulness community much more than out of the yoga community demonstrating that there is a difference of people before they practice mindfulness and after in terms of both the size and the activity of the prefrontal cortex. So that means that us as practitioners and teachers need to make sure that if we do want to enhance the activity and volume of the prefrontal cortex, we're purposely being mindful. So we need to be mindful, we need to increase our GABA, and that's just going to happen organically, and we need to plan new movements. I hope that's helpful.